Hey, this is Zach Lovett with the Advanced Tutorial for Flow. We suggest you watch the basic tutorial first as this covers some of the more technical features available to Flow. Let's begin by going through the rest of the interface. Read key values. If you click this, Flow will take your selected curve and import it into the panel. If you have more than one key selected, Flow will average the values out and import that. From there, you can easily save this curve to your library. So right now we're looking at the standard ease, and I'm just going to select this curve right here, hit read, and now this shape is right into flow. Alternatively, if we select our whole graph and hit read, it looks a little funny, but it's taken the average of everything here and brought that right in. This gives a pop-up. We can quickly copy or paste Bezier values, and flow will update immediately. It's great if you're working with web designers and want to easily import or export single curves. Let's paste something in. And you can see now that Flow has this graph applied just as we'd expect. You can hit apply, and the same curve perfectly applied. Next is save. Hopefully straightforward, this will save your current curve to your library. Let's save what we have. I'm going to call it Dragon Tail. Nice. Save to library. Leaving the graph aside, let's focus on our library. From our user library, we've got three extra buttons. Clear will delete all curves from your user library, leaving a blank for you to start again. Export will export all of your curves to a flow library file that you can share with your teammates or save with a project to maintain branding down the road. Import imports a flow library file that's previously been exported. If you right-click in your library, you'll see shortcuts to most of what we've just been over, as well as rename and remove current curve for whatever you have selected, and sort library to sort both your default and user libraries according to one of these patterns here. Let's go into expressions. This is fairly technical, and likely of very narrow use. Most of you could probably stop here. With expressions applied, you'll notice that the ease direction has been disabled. This is because expressions apply to the whole property. There's no differentiating between ease in, ease out, or both. Let's see what this looks like. I've got my standard ease selected. I'm going to hit apply. And we can see an expression has been applied to our property. And if we view it, we'll see we've gone from this standard linear curve to this nice ease corresponding to our graph everywhere on the property. Looking at the expression, you can see that because we have keys on our property, we have this long, complicated expression that basically says automatically apply our curve to all sets of keys. At the root of it is this line. If you apply ease, ease in, ease out, or linear, you're going to get one of After Effects standard interpolation methods that work as follows. The first value is the controller. The next two values dictate the controller's limits, and the last two values dictate the output limits. So as the first value moves from the second to the third, it's going to output the fourth to the fifth. Again, this is a little complicated. It makes a lot more sense when you're using it, but bear with me here. Looking at the other curves, if we were to apply something else from our default library, say quint, the expression is almost the same, except instead of ease, it says ease quint. But all of the controllers are the same. And at the bottom, we've just got this little bit of code here that tells ease quint how to work. The last thing is if you have completely custom values and hit apply, let's just make something here. We get the same structure and our function works the same way with the addition of this last parameter here. This is just an array corresponding to the four Bezier values from our graph. If you apply an expression without any keys on a property, you won't get any of the key detection and looping logic, just the function call, which is this up here, and the function itself. You can use this in any way you want to drive interpolation or automation. It's really handy in setting up complex rigs and scenes. One last thing to point out is that if you apply the same curve as keys versus an expression, the result is going to be a little different. Let's look at quint. As keys, our graph looks like this. Fairly straightforward. I've also applied it as an expression. Looking at that, we see this. The shapes are very close, but they're not 100% the same. The expression is a lot sharper just around the corners, but otherwise it fits fairly closely. This is because keyframes in After Effects are limited to a type of curve called a cubic Bezier curve, whereas expressions don't have these limits. There's infinite possibilities of what an expression can look like and what the result can be. 
So when you apply one of our default curves as keys, you're not actually seeing a true mathematical curve of that shape. They're just an approximation within the cubic Bezier system. Whereas when you apply the expression, you're seeing the mathematically true perfect curve. With quint, there's not so much of a difference. This is more visible with the back curve in that you can see at the start and end of each curve, it's a very harsh transition right into the next key. However, if we look at it with the expression, it eases into it nice and softly and it eases back out. So when we play it, you can feel that it's a lot smoother and a lot softer with the expression than what it was with the keys. So that's it for the advanced tutorial. If you have any further questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Until then, happy easing.